Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about another important organ in the process of digestion that is stomach. So let us see. Let us first look at the structure of the stomach and then we will see what role does it play in the process of digestion. So it is a J-shaped hollow bag like structure. As I said before also, it is like a bag. So as much stuff as you enter into this bag, it keeps on expanding. So it has that capacity to expand. That is why sometimes you would have seen that if you overeat, if you eat a lot of food, even then your stomach is able to accommodate that. So sometimes you would have seen that people say that I'm so full that if I eat something else, my stomach would burst. So people generally tell that as a part of joke. But it is something like this that it is an elastic bag like structure which has the capacity to expand. So when you put in more stuffs inside it, it is capable of expanding. But even there is a limitation to that also. So it expands as food enters into it and it has muscular walls and this muscular walls helps to helps in the peristalsis which takes place inside the stomach because from stomach also the food needs to travel to the next parts of the digestive system like the small intestine and the large intestine. So the muscular walls will, will actually cause movement in the stomach which will help the food to move forward. So this is a place where digestion occurs. So the exact pro here digestion means the exact process of digestion where complex substances will be broken down into simpler forms. So that process of digestion takes place in stomach. So now the important thing is we have to see how that process of digestion occurs in stomach. So let us look at the structure of stomach. So it is located on the left side of abdominal cavity. So what is abdominal cavity? Now our body is divided into various cavities. For example, from the front side we have the ventral cavities, on the back side we have all the dorsal cavities. The term dorsal means the back portion of it. So this is the ventral side and this is the dorsal side. So in the ventral side we have three cavities. First is the cranial cavity which is the cranium that is the skull, the head portion that cavity is cranial cavity. Next is the thoracic cavity, the cavity where thorax is located. So you have the thorax somewhere where. So that is the thoracic cavity. The next one is this portion that is the abdominal cavity. So in the abdominal cavity, you have organs like stomach, liver, small intestine. So all these organs are present in the abdominal cavity. And the lower portion from the back side is pelvic cavity and from the front side is abdominal pelvic cavity that is related to abdominal as well as pelvic. So that is abdominal pelvic cavity. So when we talk about stomach it is present in this abdominal cavity. It is present in this cavity and it is located towards the left side of it. Now the stomach can be divided into three parts. So the stomach can be divided into three parts that is the cardiac region, the fundic region and the pyloric region. So this is how we can divide the stomach. So if you see this portion, this bag like structure which you see that is stomach. So if you see a magnified image of the stomach, this is how it looks like. So here if you see this is the esophagus, this pipe which is coming from above, that is esophagus and here you have a sphincter which is the gastroesophageal sphincter. So this sphincter acts like a valve to allow or to regulate the amount of food entering from esophagus to stomach. Now this entire stomach is divided into three regions. This topmost region is the cardiac region. Then the middle expanded portion where the food actually gets stored that is the fundic region and the terminal portion of the stomach that is this portion is the pyloric region and here again between stomach and small intestine here again you have another sphincter or a valve like structure which is known as the pyloric sphincter. So beyond the pyloric sphincter is the small intestine. So this portion is my stomach. 
So now what happens, now what is a sphincter? As I said, it is a muscular structure which is like a valve. It is, it is. So now here if you see, these two sphincters are present both at the entry to the stomach as well as at the exit. So at the entry you have the gastroesophageal sphincter and at the exit you have the pyloric sphincter. Now these sphincters are the muscular valves and they remain closed except during passage of food. So they decide when to pass the food and how much food to be passed. So they regulate the amount of food to be passed into the stomach or out of the stomach. Now, if you talk about the size of a stomach, uh, the size of a stomach in an adult human being would be almost around the size of two closed feasts. So you can actually understand that how much it is. It is not too big, right? If you take two feasts, both of your hands, you take both the feasts together. So whatever is the like size, that is the size of your stomach that appears to be so small. So sometimes if you try to imagine that okay, we are eating so much of food and everything goes into that small stomach. But that's how it is. Okay, so that means we can also say that these sphincters separate stomach from the other organs, for example, the esophagus as well as the small intestine. Now, why it tries to keep the stomach separate, that we get to know as we talk about the processes which take place inside the stomach. Now, uh, the capacity of a stomach is to hold almost around 1.5 gallons of food plus liquid. It can hold that much of uh, substance. And in fact, that is its maximum capacity. But at the same time, stomach is not there to hold food for all the time. It, it's going to hold food only for a few hours. And after that, the food gets into the small intestine for further digestion. So stomach holds food only for a few hours. Now talking about these different parts, cardiac region is the area where the esophagus opens, as you can see here, through the esophageal sphincter. Fundic region is the central expanded portion, so this is the fundic region. And again, pyloric region is the terminal part of the stomach which opens into the small intestine. And here again, you have the pyloric sphincter. Now we will talk about gastric glands. That is, there are some specialized glands which are present inside the stomach and the secretions of these glands are important for the process of digestion. So before we talk about the secretion of these glands, let us first try to understand what are gastric glands. Now the stomach walls have several layers of epithelium. Again, when you talk about the walls of any of these organs, not only stomach, whether you talk about the esophagus, you talk about the oral cavity, you talk about small intestine, you talk about any part of the alimentary canal, they have multiple layers of epithelium on their outside. So gastric glands are present in the innermost layer. So I'll discuss about the layers of epithelium in alimentary canal and you will see that there are four layers of tissues which are present. So out of those four layers, whichever is the innermost layer, that innermost layer has the gastric glands. Now what are gastric glands? Let us see that. These gastric glands are those which secrete gastric juice and gastric juice is the one which has enzymes which are used for the process of digestion. So these are like tubules in the inner lining of the stomach. So let us suppose if this is the inner lining of the stomach, some tube like structures like this. So they are gastric glands. Now gastric glands are made up of three types of cells. What are those three types? chief cells, parietal cells and mucous neck cells. So these are the three types of cells which form the gastric glands. Now before we talk about each of these type of cells, another thing which I would like to mention is the gastric glands present inside the stomach, they are named depending upon their location inside the stomach. For example, the glands which are present in the cardiac region are known as cardiac gastric glands. Similarly, the glands which are present in the pyloric region are called the pyloric gastric glands and those which are present in the middle portion, they are known that is the fundic region are called intermediate gastric glands. So you have here in this region, you have the cardiac gastric glands 
in the middle region you have intermediate gastric glands and in the pyloric region you have pyloric gastric glands so now these gastric glands as you can see here this is how it looks like the epithelium layer this is how it looks like so the gastric glands will have these three types of cells zymogenic or chief cells parietal cells and mucous neck cells now let us see what are each of them chief cells secrete proenzyme called pepsinogen what is a proenzyme a proenzyme is that form of enzyme which is not yet activated so an enzyme in inactive form so it it still needs to be activated to perform its job so that is a proenzyme so these chief cells will secrete a proenzyme called pepsinogen parietal cells they secrete the hydrochloric acid and makes the medium acidic so the entire environment inside the stomach becomes highly acidic in nature due to this strong hcl presence mucus neck cells secrete mucus and mucus helps in lubrication so now let us see how pepsinogen hcl and mucus help in the process of digestion so that is what we are going to see now right so that's what we'll see so let we will now talk about gastric juice. So what is gastric juice? Just now I said that gastric glands secrete gastric juice. So what is gastric juice made up of? Because gastric glands are those three types of cells. Chief cells, uh, the, the chief cells, the, paris, the parietal cells. So those three types of cells, they produce all these things. That is pepsinogen, mucus, HCL. So all these things together form the gastric juice. So along with these three, some amount of lipase, lipase is another enzyme which help in digestion or which help in breaking down lipids. Renin is another enzyme which is only found in infants. So these are the enzymes and substances which together form the gastric juice produced by the stomach. So these gastric juice is produced in the stomach by the gastric glands and where are the gastric glands located? They are located on the inner epithelial lining of stomach. So now we will see how this gastric juice helps in the process of digestion. How pepsinogen, mucus, HCL, lipase, how all of them participate in the process of digestion. So that is what we have to see now. So we will look at the role of stomach in Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.